Hey everyone, this is Mark Philip at Studica, and today I'm going to be building a simple model from the Fisher Technic systems. The purpose of this video is to serve as an introductory tutorial for those of you who may not have used Fisher Technic in the past. It's going to be very primitive, but it will sort of show you how the different uh, how the different systems go together and sort of the basic concepts behind building a model using Fisher Technic. So before I start, I want to point out that the parts I'm using are from the Introduction to STEM 1 kit from Fisher Technic. This is the front panel for it. Uh, we sell this on Studica.com and I've done some other videos about this. Uh, so if you're interested in these kits, uh, check out those other videos and check out our website. So in order to build this model and follow along in the video, you'll need the parts that you see laid out on my table here. So the first thing you'll need is the base plate 120 by 60. You only need one of these. And to figure out which one is 120 by 60, I would look at these larger holes here on the top and bottom sides. There should be seven of them. Next, you're gonna need two clip axle 30s. So to identify the clip axle, you have to look at the tip here. It should have this interesting sort of end about it. This is known as the clip axle. And to know which one are the 30s, just consider them the smallest one in the group. So if you have several different kinds of clip axles, the 30s should be the shortest ones. You'll also need a crankshaft part, and this is a pretty unique piece, so it should be pretty easily identified in your kit. You'll need two building block 30s, which are these black blocks that are a little bit longer, they're rectangular. You'll also need two building block 15s with bore. And these are these little square pieces. They have notches on the two ends, but then their sides have a hole through them that can be used with axles. So you need two of these. You also need a gear wheel T30, and that is what this looks like. It's identified by looking at these three holes on the side, and the circle in the middle has the ridges on it, like such right here. So you only need one of these. You also need a cogwheel T10, which is what this guy is. You'll notice it has a clip socket here on the end, has this cog shape here, and then it has another clip socket on the other side. It's rather short. You only need one of these. You'll need one flat hub collette, which is what this looks like. It's smooth on uh, one side. And then this side here has this sort of ridge around it and this uh, socket in the middle. You also notice that it has the teeth on the edges right around here. So you only need one of these. And lastly, you need one of these hub nuts. This looks a little bit similar to the Colette that we just saw, but there's some slight differences, namely this right here. You use this to twist and turn and tighten things. So you only need one of these. So to get started, we're gonna grab one of our building block 30s, which is this piece, and then one of our building block 15s with borehole, which is this piece over here. We're gonna take the building block 30, and with the notch facing out this way, we're going to take our building block 15, and we're going to slide it in through the back side here of the building block 15, like such. Now the important thing to notice when you're connecting these is you need this line back here to be running uh, vertically down so that you can slide this piece in through the back into the middle. You need to make two of these. So let me go ahead and do one more. Now you should have two pieces that look like this. Next, what we need to do is take the crankshaft and a clip axle and you see that there's a clip socket here on the shaft. What we need to do is insert the clip axle into that socket. So just make sure they're lined up and you just push it in snap and you hear it snap when I put it in there. So you can hear that again, listen. That's how you know it's in tight. Now what we need to do with this piece is take one of our items that we had already created and take the cog wheel and what we're gonna do is pass the crankshaft through the circle of the bore built, uh, block right here. You're just gonna push it through and you're gonna see the clip axle come out the other end. So that's where you take the cog wheel and you see the clip socket here. We push it into 
the other side of the clip axle that came through our borehole. And so now you can see we can rotate the shaft and we will have movement on the cog here. So let's put this object aside for now. So now what we want to do is attach the piece that we had onto the base plate here. So let's go ahead and grab our socket. And what we want to do, you'll notice the grooves right here on the outside. We want the shorter groove that's on the very outside of this piece. So you'll see right here when my finger's pointing, that's where we're sliding this piece into. We want the shaft to be facing away from the board so that we can do something like this. So again, all that I'm doing is taking the notch on the underside of this piece, sliding it right into here, pushing it, and then we should be good. Now what we need to do is create a secondary cog wheel that we're going to be using. So you want to grab the gear wheel T30 and you want to grab the collet and one of your clip axles. And what you're going to do is push the collet up underneath the cog wheel. So notice that the cog wheel has a smooth side on it. That's the underside. So we need our collet poking through on this side here. And then what we want to do is run this clip axle through the bottom like this, push it through. And once we have it through, you should feel it sort of stop at a point. It, it will become a little bit harder to push it through farther. So once you have it at this point, what we need to do is take our nut, which is this piece here. We need to slide it through the middle of the axle and on top of our collet. And once it feels planted in place, start turning the nut while holding the collet on this side. And what we're going to do is make this finger tight. Finger tight is basically the point where as you turn with your fingers, you reach enough resistance to where you can no longer turn um, with ease. That's essentially what finger tight is. So I'm pretty much finger tight at this point. And now my collet's in there and it's pretty firm. So the nut really tightened that in there for us. Now the next thing we need to do is take our base plate again and we're gonna take our other object that we made and we're going to put it, we're gonna leave a space of one between the notches here on the baseboard, but we're going to slide it on in much the same way as we did the other. So you'll see that there's a space right here between the two. So let me take it off so you can see that again. We're going right into this notch here. So you slide it on like such. And then lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to take our wheel that we just made with the clip axle in the middle, and you're just gonna push it through the front of the borehole here. And you're gonna have these two pieces snap relatively close together. And now if we start turning the crank, you'll see that we have motion between these cogs. So that does it for this tutorial video. Please uh, share the video if you found it helpful. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and get more updates like this regularly. Uh, you can also check our website out, www.studica.com. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you have a good day.